Hello, John. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, we have to talk about your new series on Netflix, Boo Bitch, which you seem to be the breakout star of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, it's funny because I was when I was asked to audition for it, I was like, dad, you want me to audition for a dad? But then when I uh, saw the script and the audition sides, uh, he, you, you know the show. It, I'm, I'm not a normal dad. I'm not a normal dad. So it made it more interesting. So I was happy. I was happy I wasn't one of those boring dads in those teen dramas where they're just there for support. So I, I'm kind of the anti-dad. So, so I liked it. I liked it a lot. You're the cool dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Cause I was like, oh look, I'm 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 uh, uh, drug positive. I'm uh, drinking. I want my daughter to experiment. My 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 wife is uh, sex positive. Uh, uh, so I thought I was a cool dad. But no matter how cool you are, the daughter still thinks you're a dork. So yeah. you're not you're not cool. So so being cool didn't make me any cooler. <laughs> so <laughs> but I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool before. NCIS 24, all that stuff. I was, I'm pretty serious. I'm pretty, I'm not comedy. I'm pretty serious and all that stuff. So this was the first comedy that I've done. And I don't know if you noticed, it's a, it was a transformation. I don't, I don't look like this uh, um, in the show. I have gray hair. I'm a little bigger. Uh, I'm, I'm dad bod. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, they turned me into a dad. They turned me into a dad. So my agents are like, oh, this is great footage. This is great. I'm like, but that does, but no, I go, <laughs> they're going to see that. And they're going to, I go, they need to know I can do other stuff. Uh, so, I mean, we have other stuff they can look at, but, um, but it's good to know that now I have some comedy on my belt. So Absolutely. it's good. I, when I have a little bit more time, I like to talk to uh, people and kind of get their story a little bit. If this is everyone's introduction to you, yeah. But you've been in this business a long time. You have been all over my television. Um, talk to me about where you started and how you've, like, your journey a little bit. All right. Well, I started, I lived in Houston, Texas. I, I you know, it's funny. I went, I went to a drama school in Houston, Texas, a private acting school for adults. And I was the only kid in, the, in, that, in that school. But Peter Bagdanovich, who's a, I don't know if you know, a huge director uh, was uh, teaching there. So I begged my mom to go and I went, I was the only kid. And that was my uh, start in acting. And then I went to uh, New York uh, and I just started pounding the pavement. I did national tours. I did a couple TV shows there. And then all my agents in New York said, if you really want the big bucks and you want a lot, you know, more opportunity for TV and film, you got to go to LA. So I moved here. And then that's when I got my agent, my manager, and then I started doing shows. Um, I've done uh, old shows. Uh, so for young, young viewers, they may not know these shows. Uh, the West Wing, 24, NCIS, uh, uh, Mistresses, uh, a whole bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. And um, um, yeah, so that's where I started. I started uh, doing all those old uh, oh, I keep saying old. It's not, they weren't old when I was doing them. But they were cool old. shows. You know, for an actor, <laughs> and especially during that time, because minority casting was not the best, um, I was very fortunate. And I had a very good team on my side. And everything I did book, people have heard of it. While I have friends, you know, doing, you know, stuff I've never even heard of um, on, you know, independent this, short films, that. And I did a couple of those things, but for whatever reason, I got lucky. And so I did that. I did that for a while. So yeah, I did. A lot of my life, a lot of my life, younger t uh, career was TV. I wish I did more film, to be honest, but really, uh, yeah, I want to, here's my, my dream is to be in a, well, two dreams. I have two dreams. Ready. One dream is to be in a horror movie and be mutilated somehow. Uh, even if I'm the first victim, I don't care. I just want to die on screen. I want people to <laughs> watch, watch me, watch my, watch me die. Um, and then um, I want to do a comedy where, you know, in the end credits where the entire cast just randomly starts singing and dancing. Yes. I want to do that. That sounds so weird, but I want to do that. And so I'm just waiting. I'll have my time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, um, you've started in, you kind of with Boobage gotten two of two bits 
of your dream, right? You're doing a comedy. Yeah. A horror ish. Kind of. You're right. Paranormal. Yeah. That's yeah, paranormal. So and I got to that. work with what I call New Hollywood. So nice. I, yeah. Lana Condor, she's huge in, in the young Hollywood community. Zoe uh, Coletti, who plays her best friend, if you you have to look her up. She's she's done everything. Yeah, and she's, she's a she's a phenomenal actor. She's in uh, Murder Is in My Building right now, season two. She's mm -hmm. really good in that too. So I got to work. I got to learn from these these new Hollywood uh, actors too. So I was the only. I think me and my wife were pretty much the only prominent adult characters in the series. So. I was surrounded by young people. So. <laughs> it keeps us youthful, John. That's what it does. Yes. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about your time on set. Did you have a favorite scene that you got to shoot? Uh, yeah. my. Um, well, it was. we shot it during the heart of the pandemic, so it was tough. We had to get tested every day. We had to wear masks. We had to live in these little Ziploc huts. Like We couldn't talk to anyone. The only time we actually got to communicate was when we were on set doing our scene. And as soon as we were done, we had to separate and go in our, our little cubby holes and not see anybody just for safety's sake. So it was hard. It was hard for me because I wish that wasn't the experience. Because uh, I wanted to be, with, you know, I wanted to, 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 to really mingle with everyone. But um, the first day, actually, the first day of filming was episode two. We shot episode two first. It's when um, Lana, uh, and Zoe is sitting in her bed and they were trying to figure out, wait, I'm dead, I'm dead. And I come in and I, uh, I, you know, I say, that's what happens when you get wasted. And then my wife and I start to figure, it's a short scene, but it was the first time we all got to get together because before that was all Zoom. We had a Zoom table read, we did everything Zoom. So this oh, is the wow. first time I actually got to interact with my wife and my daughter. And that was like our breaking Breaking the Ice, I guess, scene. So it was good. It was good. That was my that was my best one. Visually, I think the table scene is what everyone remembers, the dinner scene. Absolutely. So, yeah, because Netflix keeps posting. Netflix keeps posting it. that scene, yeah. So <laughs> it got creepy, though. It got creepy. I have to say, um, do you want a pregame? At least 20 times. And there were some creepy versions in that, <laughs> you know. So I look, I look like like a creeper. I was cringeworthy, so because I was trying not to be cringeworthy, because it is those lines could be really cringy. So uh, this dad who was promoting drinking and and pre gaming and all that to his young daughter and telling her that she looks hot, you know. So it could be really cringy. So I we were trying to do it where I was, I wasn't, but make it more, you know more like I'm cool so but it worked it worked it worked out it works because I have seen all the social media posts of being like this dad the dad the dad which is why I was like I had to reach out to you and be like do you want to talk to me because we have to talk about this show something you mentioned earlier was like diversity casting and there wasn't a lot of representation and things like that so you coming up in this business and seeing the change like how amazing was that how important was that for you to see an entire asian cast an entire asian family oh this was great because when i was uh contacted to audition for it um they told me well one it's a comedy with a asian lead female and that's rare they you know minorities are usually the best friends the sidekicks that kind of thing and now it's starting to get becoming more of the norm to have different ethnicities as the lead character and it doesn't mean that only Asians are going to watch that show. Because, uh, you know, Lana Condor has, her fan base is all over the place. She has all types, all races, all ages, everybody loving her. So it was great that she's carrying a show. And then I found out, they're like, John, because she's Vietnamese, we want to make sure that we are accurate in the casting. So we want her father to be Vietnamese. We want her mother, her son, everyone to make it accurate, even though they don't even mention our nationality. We don't even talk about being Asian in the show. They just, it's, it was more just like to be authentic, to be authentic for us. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's what I thought. I thought was phenomenal. And if you saw, it's like full of diversity. The show has so many different races, genders, you know, uh, non-binary characters. I mean, you'll see you see tons of people in that show. So that's what I liked about being part of uh, this new this new wave of casting. 
I think that's amazing because a lot of times they do like the Pan Asian thing or like they take everyone from South America and they're like all of you are Latin, yep. all of you are Asian. So I love that Netflix took the time and the care to be like, no, we're doing this right. Yeah. Yeah, they- it was great. It was great. And we got to relate. And a little trivia. Um, every uh, uh, every episode of the uh, show was directed by women. In our final episode, not only was it a full Vietnamese family, we had a female director who was Vietnamese as well. So it was just like Vietnamese, Vietnamese, Vietnamese. But you would have never known by watching Boobitch. You know, it's not like we walked around speaking Vietnamese or doing any, you know, doing anything like that. But they just wanted, they just, those, those little things that they did uh, just made the experience so cool, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I've never done that. All the shows I've done in the past, it's never been like that. So, uh, so this was, it was a very, uh, I, I had the best time shooting it. That's so cool. Did you have a favorite behind the scenes moment that you can share? <laughs> yes, I can. Uh, there was one scene that got cut out and there was a scene uh, 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 where Lana throughout the show keeps saying she wants to go to prom. She doesn't want to go to prom. She wants to go to prom. She doesn't want to go to prom. So there's a scene where me and my wife were waiting in the kitchen for her to come home and we bought her a corsage for her to go to prom only to realize she doesn't want to go to prom. And there's this whole, this whole uh, intermingle with me. The director at the time asked me uh, to go faster in my dialogue. And they asked my wife to go slower to even out the pacing. Now, I don't know if you know, as an actor, when someone tells you something like that, that's all that's on your mind, right? That's yeah. all that's on your mind. So as soon as she comes in, I'm talking like, blah, 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 you know, right? and I'm just like, you know, so fast. And my wife's like slow motion, you know, and um, the, we kept having to do retakes. And then I kept forgetting my lines because I was so focused on the speed. To one point, I just looked at the camera and I'm like, I know my lines. I don't know what happened. And it was just, it was a, you know, it's, it's really, it, I think when you get direction, sometimes it's easy, but when, when you're so focused and then you get someone adds something else onto you, you just, sometimes it just puts a big speed bump on your, maybe it's good they took it out of the, took it out of the show. So, but that was a big faux pas. That was a big faux pas. I, I knew my lines. They clear, you know, I clearly knew my lines, but when I got that one adjustment, it totally threw me off. Totally threw me off. <laughs> it happens. It happens to all of us. Yeah. Um, so what's next for you, John? I know you want to do horror movies. You want to get cut open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the name. Well, there are a couple, yeah, there's a couple things in the making. I cannot say, um, uh, but if they happen, they'll happen. So, um, but I'm good. I'm good. I'm actually just enjoying uh, the life of Boobitch right now. So, um, and seeing where that's going to lead me. But, um, but yeah, but yeah. Um, and my last thing for you, because we love to do this for social meds and the tick tick tock um, in 30 seconds or less, why should everyone watch Boobitch? All right, 30 seconds, all right. All right, so everybody should watch Boobitch because it is funny, um, it's heartfelt, uh, there's a surprise, um, it's diverse, and because I'm in it, and um, because I think we need, uh, di- I, I think Hollywood needs to see how shows should be done with diversity, with a mixed cast. Uh, uh, we need to see more of that. And I think uh, uh, you'll enjoy the watch. It's quick watch too. It's eight episodes, 30 minutes each. You'll be done in three and a half hours. Exactly. Boom. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. And everyone check out Boo Bitch on Netflix. Awesome. Thank you.